This is the second video I'm doing in a series on a Telecaster build. This build involves a Fender Road Warren Telecaster. Be sure to check out my previous video for the details on the Road Warren Tele body. This video is going to be about the custom neck that I bought from MusicCraft. I said this previously, but there's a lot of places to buy a neck from, whether you're replacing a neck or doing a parts caster build. So if you want something custom, there's MusicCraft, there's Warmoth, there's B. Hefner, there's USA Custom Guitars, and there's probably more that I don't even know about. If you're looking to buy a more standard neck, there's obviously Fender, there is All Parts, there's Mighty Might, there's Hosco, which I just found out about. And in the same vein as Hosco, there's all those sort of Chinese main necks that you might buy off of eBay or DHgate or something like that. And now that I've listed all those, I may do a video in the future about the pros and cons of all these different types of necks. So let's go ahead and get into the specs of the neck that I bought from MusicCraft. I did tell you in my previous video that there was an issue with the neck, and so I'll get into that. But first let me tell you what I asked for, and that'll explain what I didn't get. And by the way, this is the neck in the current state. It has been finished in a nitrocellulose tint and clear coat, and I'm currently letting it dry. Here's the back, and yes, there is a run right there, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to sand all this off anyway, and I will show you all that in a later video, and I'll show you how I got into this current state. It is, like I said, drying. It has about one more week. I still have to put on a decal, and of course I have to mount the tuners. I have to finish the back of the neck. I'm going to put some, um, I'm going to try to make that a little darker once I sand it off, and then I'm going to put some stain on it, and of course I have to mount the neck to the guitar. So all that is to come. Now when you go to buy a Telecaster neck from MusicCraft, you have a couple of options. You can get a one-piece neck, a two-piece neck, or a Blackguard Tele neck. I wanted an early 50s Telecaster neck, so a two-piece was out of the question. A two-piece neck, if you're not familiar with it, is, for example, a rosewood fretboard or even a maple cap. But a one-piece neck is a solid piece of maple with a truss rod inserted in the back. So that being said, I had two options, the sort of standard one-piece neck or the Blackguard Tele neck. The difference in these two necks is $100, and I'm not honestly sure why. With the Blackguard Tele neck, they tell you that you can get as close as possible to a Blackguard Tele. A Blackguard Tele being one of these early 50s, black pickguard, sort of a blonde finished Telecaster. So these are, as far as I know, your Broadcasters, your Esquires, and like your 50, 51, 52 Telecasters. I'm not exactly sure when all those came into being. There was an issue with naming the Telecaster at one point. So there's also a no caster in the mix. If you have all the details and you want to summarize it in the comments below, feel free to do so. So with this Black Guard Tele, the cool thing from Music App is that you can pick from a list of neck profiles. This is the profile on the back of the neck. They've actually taken measurements of a lot of these early Telecasters and they're going to give you the option of picking one out. Now, I don't know how you know which one you like unless you've played some of these. Maybe you've had the benefit of playing one and you can't afford the real thing, but you want one just like it. So if you know, you know what serial number this Telecaster is, again, I don't know how you know this, but you can actually pick a serial number of a Telecaster and get the same neck profile. Some of the other things is they have like the correct dot spacing and the correct dot size. They have heavily rolled fretboard edges and the thinner skunk stripe on the back. But I think that's about it. Again, I'm not sure why there's a $100 price difference. I do know that getting the heavy rolled fretboard edges for a standard neck is about a $40 upcharge, but that still doesn't constitute the $60. So what I did, because it just made logical sense and there wasn't a lot of reason that you couldn't do it on MusicCraft's website, was that I went for a standard neck, but I wanted to get a few details and options like the Black Art Tele. I just didn't want a Black Art Tele neck. And with the standard neck, you can have, for example, your truss rod to be vintage style. You can also have your dot spacing to be vintage style. So there's a lot of things that you can do to get basically a black artelli neck without getting the black artelli from MusicCraft. Of course, you can also specify the back profile of the neck with a standard neck. So I'll tell you the two sort of customized options that I wanted for MusicCraft. I actually contacted them in an email and I said, hey, I want these couple things. Can you do this for me with a standard neck? And they said, yeah, just put these certain things in the notes section of your order and we'll take care of it. So one of those was I wanted the thinner skunk stripe on the back of the neck. Back in the 50s, I guess, the skunk stripe thickness was about 0.2 inches. Now in more modern tellies, it's about 0.25 or a quarter of an inch. So I just thought, hey, if I have the option, I'll just go ahead and get the thinner skunk stripe that is more vintage correct. The other thing is that when you look at a lot of vintage Telecasters, you'll see that the walnut plug on the headstock is not like teardrop shape, it's not elongated, it's more like an egg shape. So here's what I'm talking about. If you can see that walnut plug, this is the more vintage style 
It looks like maybe an egg or an oval-ish shape and not exactly like a teardrop or a raindrop with sort of a point. And it's not really long, it's sort of short and fat. Now this is where I had a problem with my neck for MusicCraft. I'll explain how I got it to the point I have it at now, but I thought I was gonna have to send it back. But before I get into that, let's go ahead and look at the specs for this neck. And just so I don't forget, I've got a list here of all the specs so I can give you the accurate description. Okay, so first thing is the headstock shape, Telecaster, duh. But speaking of headstock shapes, the MusiCraft Telecaster headstock, at least on the standard, is a little bit off, and I had to make a minor modification, so I'll show you that probably in a later video. Scale length, 25 and a half, which is the standard Fender scale length. Number of frets, 21 frets, the vintage style. Nut width, 1.65. This is the nut width that I have come to find that I like. And this is one of those things where like, Warmoth, for example, just now started doing the 1.65 inch nut and necks like All Parts and Mighty Might. A lot of these aftermarket necks do not offer the 1.65 inch nut, which is a big surprise to me. I don't understand it because it's really a popular fender size nut but there's actually not a lot of options out there if you're looking for a fender license neck with this 1.65 inch nut. Okay, moving on, heel width, three and three sixteenths inch heel width, which is standard fender size. Tuner hole size, I got the 11 and 30 seconds of an inch, which is the vintage Clouson style hole for the tuners. Truss rod type, I got the single acting adjustment at the heel. While I'm on the truss rod, let me explain that a little bit. With my Stratocaster build that I just got finished with, I actually chose to have the truss rod adjustment at the headstock instead of the heel, because with the Stratocaster, you really have to basically take off the entire pick guard. And when you take off the pick guard, you take off the pickups. So you basically have to pull the strings off, you're messing with the wires, you're having to shove like wires back into cavities and things like that. And if you don't want to take the pick guard off, you essentially have to take the neck off the body, adjust it, hope it's right, string it back up to tension, and do this cycle over and over again. That's something that I did not want to do. So instead of getting the vintage correct truss rod on my Stratocaster, I went with a sort of vintage modified version and I got the truss rod adjustment on the headstock, but I did not get a walnut or a plastic plug. I just got a, basically a little hole in the headstock. Now with the vintage Telecaster, the adjustment at the heel is actually pretty easy. And I'll show you what I mean. So this is the road worn Tele body that I have. I do not have screws in the pick guard at the moment. And since I don't, I can take off the pick guard pretty easily like that. So now what we have here is this little cutaway inside the body right at the bottom of the neck. So if you take off this vintage Tele pick guard, it only has five screws. So it's fairly easy. Once you do that, the neck normally would be right here and it would be taking up the neck pocket space, but you can get essentially a 90 degree screwdriver or one of those paint can openers to be more specific because it has a really short end on it. You can put that in there and adjust the truss rod, no problem. You'll also notice that the neck pickup does not come out with the pick guard on a vintage style Telecaster. So it stays put, you don't have to adjust the height or anything like that. Just take the pick guard off. You can even take it and slide it out from your strings without having to take the strings off. Do your neck adjustment and then put it back on, you're done. So that's one of the reasons I did not have a problem with the vintage style truss rod for this Telecaster. Okay, fretboard radius, I went with nine and a half. This was a big reason that I wanted to get a customized neck in the first place. The Rotorn Telecaster comes with a seven and a quarter inch radius neck, and that is more rounded. And I've heard, and I don't have a lot of experience with it, but you know, it's said that you can't maybe play as fast up the, the neck. And when you do some big bends, the notes can kind of fart out up the neck. So I like a nine and a half inch radius neck, and it's a little bit more modern, and so I wanted that option on my neck. And that's what MusicCraft provided me. Okay, the nut slot, style is an eighth inch standard fender flat bottom, whatever. The shaft wood is rock maple. I didn't go quarter sawn or any kind of fancy stuff. I just went with rock maple. The top dots and the inlay dots are black plastic, as you'd expect. There is no binding. The side dots, I went for the larger black 332nd dots, which is more vintage correct. For the 12th dot spacing, I went for the wider vintage correct pre-64 spacing. For the fret wire size, I went with the nickel silver 9055 medium tall. I explained this a little bit in my other video, but this is essentially a 6105 fender fret. If you were, however, to get a 6105 fret from Warmoth, for example, you would not be getting the same size as the 6105 from Fender. So MusicCraft's 9055 is the same as Fender's 6105 
fret. If you want to know more about that, I encourage you to check out MusicCraft and Wormus sites where they explain their fret sizes or watch my previous video where I go into a little bit more detail. So for the back profile of my Telecaster neck, I actually went with a 59 Les Paul profile. I have a Les Paul on Epiphone with a fat neck, which is what the 59s had, and I actually really like it a lot. And the vintage style Telecasters, the early 50s, most of them had a really fat neck, like a U or a boat or a baseball bat. And I just like the idea of having a pretty chunky neck on this Telecaster, and so I went with a 59 Les Paul neck profile. Now I got no finish on this neck. It was completely raw when I got it from MusicCraft. Now MusicCraft does not warranty a neck that is unfinished from warping or twisting. They will warranty it from any kind of manufacturer defect or you know if there's something that you didn't get that you wanted. They will warranty it for that. I didn't have any problem with my Stratocaster neck being in the raw finish and I didn't have any problem with this neck, at least as far as I know. It looks straight as an arrow and there's no problems. And the reason I wanted it raw is because I wanted to finish it in nitrocellulose. And I also wanted to relic it a little bit. MusicCraft currently does not offer any kind of nitrocellulose finishing because I think it takes too long and it's just more of an intense process. And so they basically are working with another company and they say if you want to buy one of these necks we have to ship it to you and then you have to ship it to them and then they finish it in nitrocellulose which seems like it would be pretty expensive. Okay the mounting holes, I did not get mounting holes on this neck. I'm going to put those in myself so that it matches up exactly with the Telecaster body that I have. Alright, that's all for this video. I will keep you up to date as I go along in the process of finishing up the neck and placing it on the body. And I did some fret work that I'll probably also tell you about. And I'll go through again the uh, all the processes on the neck with the finish of the nitro and the decal and all that good stuff. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. As always, we'll see you in the next video.